Welcome back to our discussion exploring the full spectrum of mobile risks in government sponsored by Lookout here on federalnewsradio.com and Federal News Radio 1500 AM. My guests today are Bob Stevens, the Vice President of Federal for Lookout, and Kirsten Todd, Managing Partner of Liberty Group Ventures. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. And let's take a look ahead in this segment and maybe give us an idea of what you see as future uses uh, professionally in work situations for federal users of mobile devices. What are they going to be doing next with them? Kirsten, you want to start? Sure. I, I think we're going to continue to see the technology improve and that mobile devices are going to be used more and more for uh, work functions. Um, I don't think any of us would have thought when we first saw a flip phone that we'd essentially have all of our personal as well as professional information held on one device. And when you think about social security numbers, when you think about medical information, uh, being able only to access medical information through uh, apps uh, and other functionalities, that is only going to increase. And when we look at the proliferation of apps that are being developed, those apps are being developed for mobile devices. And we're going to start seeing, I think, the increased functionality for work as well. Uh, we see now in companies and industries the, nece the necessity of being able to open apps for uh, something that you're doing in the workplace. So again, the, the functionalities are only going to increase, and I think the mobile device is only going to become more critical. Yeah, so more apps, more data. And what does that mean in terms of future security challenges? Well, they, they continue to grow, as we talked about. You know, one of the things uh, um, that uh, didn't really exist for a mobile device until recently was, you know, the ability to, uh, to catch fishing um, because of all the ways that you can fish, like we talked about earlier. Um, so, you know, we're going to see more and more uh, security functionality uh, that's required based on the expansion or the use cases um, for mobile devices. And review for us the uh, recent John Kelly breach, you know, a White House-related breach, and also the Strava Labs a DOD issue. These have been some big mobile-related breaches. Review for them what happened, for, for us what happened and what some of the lessons learned are. Well, we don't have a lot of details about uh, General Kelly's uh, device. I, I think what we do know is that... It, his Except he's not happy about it. His personal device was compromised. And, and again, if I'm the bad guy, I mean, that's it's a soft underbelly for me. I, I, I know that there's probably not a lot of security on that device um, because it, uh, security is, a, in a lot of cases, an afterthought for uh, for a mobile device. Um, but I also know that he carries that device with him wherever he goes. So if I can get some sort of malware on that device, and now I can turn on a microphone, or I can turn on a camera, or I can capture his text messages, um, I could be in every meeting that he's in, um, which represents a serious threat. Yeah, that thought of, of that possibility came to light in the Facebook situation, too, where a lot of people are most, I think that's a greater usage of these types of apps. Social media is happening on mobile devices than on desktops. That's true. Uh, you know, in fact, you know, I think that um, most people access the Internet uh, um, via their smartphones uh, at a greater percentage than they do from uh, from the desktop. So um, the use of the mobile devices is, is only going to grow. It's convenient. Uh, it gives you the instant gratification. If you look at it from a mission standpoint, uh, you know, if uh, if, uh, you know, the Army has access to an application that gives them real time uh, information about, you know, where all the bad guys are. Uh, their job becomes much more effective. And uh, we've got the Census Bureau coming up in a couple of years using mobile devices for enumeration, uh, coupled with people using the Internet to self-report. They're going to experiment with this, and hopefully they'll get that over the line. So there's a two-way mobile situation there that might be unprecedented probably in, in the nation's history. And it's going to be uh, critical that those devices are protected because those devices are going to have per personally identifiable, identifiable information, or PII, um, which uh, we know that the government wants to be able to protect um, for all the citizens. And, uh, you know, some of these states, uh, not so much at the federal level, but the states are deploying many, many mobile device, m many of their applications, services to citizens, including those related to elections via mobile devices. There's companies devoted to that whole, whole uh, milieu. Anything to be learned at the non-federal level, but government that could be applied upstream to the federal government use of mobile? I think the biggest challenge when we start to see this happening is we tend to put out innovation uh, outpacing security and that we look to have the technology and the innovation and the accessibility before we're thinking about the security to it. And the challenge with states has always been in cybersecurity, a lack of resources. And my only concern would be as we look to create these uh, accessibility, this accessi accessibility and the interdependencies on how to run some of the state functions without aligning that at the same time with the necessary security functions 
it's going to create greater vulnerabilities. And it's actually harder to detect the state level because they're disparate functions. Um, so again, when we are always talking about innovation, it's important that we're aligning the security. And I think mobile devices are going to represent the need for that more than any other functionality that we've seen. Because if people access government services with mobile devices, they may not be the same as government employees. Uh, and so the issue comes up of the network that you use, because, uh, Bob, earlier you mentioned you're outside of the perimeter of the network. Mm -hmm. So people are using the publicly available uh, networks, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and so on. Or they might be using the Wi-Fi network of some location, whatever it might be, that is not secured. So that would seem like an area where uh, agencies need to get really sharp, both mainly for their employees, but also for people that might access them through, th through those networks. Yeah, an example of that is, uh, is the VA. Uh, the VA, I'm sure, has a bunch of mobile applications uh, that they use. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm sure that uh, the veterans are using them. Um, there's likely to be some personal information in there or some healthcare information. Uh, the, and so the VA really owes it to its constituents to ensure that device is secure before allowing the veteran to be able to enter uh, any type of data that could be damaging. Okay, so in the time we have left, what are the best strategies agencies should pursue now to get around that whole idea so that mobile security simply becomes part of cybersecurity? So as I uh, mentioned earlier, there's several things that they need to be aware of. Um, it's the networking threat or the man-in-the-middle attacks that you talked about on Wi-Fi. They need to worry about safe browsing so or phishing uh, via browsing or, or texting or um, the messaging apps. Uh, they need to worry about uh, malicious uh, behavior in an application. Uh, they also need to worry about vulnerabilities that, that may exist in the operating systems uh, themselves. Um, so there are ways to protect those. Of course, Lookout is one of them. Um, but uh, the agencies really need to understand the complete threat and then take action. But it's really time to get beyond thinking of this just as an MDM type of issue, but really much more comprehensive in terms of the products that you need to protect your devices. That's true. You know, and I, I think that uh, perhaps the biggest vulnerability that the government agencies face today is to do nothing um, because the bad guys sure are not, um, aren't waiting uh, to, to attack the device. Okay. Kirsten, final comment? The uh, importance of education and awareness and prioritizing mobile security, and we need to see that at the highest level in government so that agencies have the call to action uh, from the White House to understand that this is a priority and they need to integrate it into their own security strategies. All right, good note to end on. I want to thank today's guests. Kirsten Todd is managing partner of Liberty Group Ventures. Bob Stevens is the vice president of public sector at Lookout. I'm Tom Temin, Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. For more on this discussion, go to federalnewsradio.com and use the search term Lookout. On behalf of Lookout, thank you for joining us. The archive session will be available shortly. This concludes our discussion. Thank you.